Good day, I'm Mark Julius L. Jimenez. Today, I'm going to discuss about watershed management. Before we discuss what is a watershed management, let us first know what is a watershed. Every body of water, whether rivers, lakes, tanks, streams, and even estuaries, have watershed. Watershed is an area of is an, is an land area where surface water drains down into a single point. It is also called a drainage basin. It collects all the water before it gets down, before it gets evaporated or transpired. Whether it's in a form of snow, rain, snow melt, sprinklers, it's like a big funnel that drains down into one spot. A watershed not only transports water but also includes sediments and other materials including pollutants. Now what is a watershed management? Watershed management is a term used to describe the process of implementing land use practices and water management practices to protect and improve the quality of the water and other natural resources within a watershed by managing the use of those land and water resources in a comprehensive manner. Water management planning is also a process that results in a plan or a blueprint of how to best protect and improve the water quality and other natural resources in a watershed. Very often, water, very often, watershed boundaries extend over political boundaries into adjacent municipalities and or states. This is why comprehensive planning process that involves all affected municipalities located in the watershed is essential to a successful watershed management. Now, there are four different types of watershed management. Watershed is classified depending upon the size, drainage, shape, and land use pattern. The first type is the mile watershed. It is having a land area of 1 to 10 hectares. The second one is the mini watershed, having a land area of 10 to 10 to 100 hectares. The third one is the micro watershed, having a land area of 100 to 1,000 hectares. And the last one is the macro watershed, having a land area of 1,000 to 10,000 hectares. Now, there are different objectives of watershed management. These objectives of my watershed management are first, conservation of soil and water, to control the damaging runoff and degradation, also to control and prevent soil erosion, to minimize the over-exploitation of resources. Second one is to maximize use of runoff water, to manage and utilize the runoff water for useful and effective purpose. Third one is to rehabilitate the land and the land of watershed to protect, conserve, and improve the land of watershed for efficient and sustainable production for years to come. Also to control the pollution. The fourth one is to improve the source of watershed to protect and enhance the water resource originating in the watershed. The fifth one is to check the soil for possible soil erosion to reduce the effect of sediment yield on the watershed. The sixth one is to is rehabilitation of deteriorating lands. Lands that are in a state of breaking down must be taken care of before it turns into waste. The seventh is to moderate the floods, peaks at downstream areas. And the eighth one is to increase the infiltration of rainwater. It is during rainfall or snowmelt. Ninth is to improve wildlife resources, to increase and improve the production of timbers others and life resources, also for wildlife preservation. And the last one is to improve groundwater recharge. The charging of groundwater to provide regular water supply for consumption and industry, as well as irrigation. Now, there are four phases or steps in watershed management. These are recognition phase, restoration phase, protection phase, and improvement phase. Now, for the recognition phase, it involves two steps. The first one is the recognition of the problem. May it be small or big, all problems must be faced directly to avoid future problems. Second one is the analysis of the cause of the problem and its effect. Analyze thoroughly the problem at hand. Where did it come from? What are the possible reasons why such problem occurred? And if then identified, would removing what caused it will remove the problem or make it worse? How big of a damage does its effect do? Are there more problems to arise if not given attention immediately? 
The last one is to develop an alternative solutions of problems. Develop solutions that are economical and can be adapted by the locals for future improvements. Now, for the restoration phase, it includes two main steps. The first one is the selection of the best solution to the problems identified. It must be economical, can be easily adapted by the locals, and a long-term solution. The, last, the next one is the application of the solution to the problems of the land. It must be based on the type of soil at hand, resources are present. And the third phase is the protection phase. This phase takes care of the general health of the watershed and ensures normal functioning. The protection is against all factors which may cause determined in the watershed condition. Protection against natural calamities that may occur, that may occur bacteria, everything that may hinder the flow and current state of the watershed. And the last phase is the improvement phase. This phase deals with overall improvement in the watershed and all land that is covered. Attention is paid to agriculture and forest management and production. Foreign production and pasture management, socio-economic conditions to achieve the best objectives of the watershed management. Now, there are also watershed management practices in terms, in terms of purpose. The first one is to increase infiltration. To increase the infiltration of rainwater or water from snow melt into soil to avoid dry soil and flooding. Second one is to increase water holding capacity. To increase the amount of increase the amount of volume of the water, the watershed can hold so that it can serve more purpose, especially to the human needs. And last is to prevent soil erosion. Avoiding flooding which can cause casualties and destroy the environment and agriculture. The second is in the method and accomplishment. Vegetative measures and agronomical measures. The first one is thrift cropping. Used when a, slope is, when a slope is too steep or when there is no alternative method of preventing soil erosion. A method of farming which involves cultivating a field partition into long narrow stripes, stripes which are altered in a crop rotation system. The next one is pastured cropping. Pasture cropping is a planting of annual crops into a living perennial pasture. It includes a wide variation of techniques around preparing for planting, timing of planting, herbicide and fertilizer types, and applications in grazing management. <clears throat> the third one is grassland farming. It's the production of grasses and clovers of various types of crops. There are two fundamental purposes of grassland farming. The first one is to hold and improve the soil. And the second is to make the operation pay dividends in the form of livestock. It is certainly the most economic, economical type of agriculture. The last one is woodlands. Habitat where trees are dominant plant form. The individual trees canopies generally overlap and interlink. Open forming a more or less continuous canopy which shades the ground to varying to degrees. Now in the engineering measures or structural Practices. The first one is contour bounding, which involves the placement of lines of stones along the natural rises of landscape and contour farming. These techniques help to capture and hold the rainfall before it becomes runoff. Second one is terracing. It is a method of farming consisting of building platforms along a slope. And next one is also construction of earthen embankment. And the next is construction of check tabs. Is a small dam constructed across a drainage ditch, swale, or channel to lower the velocity of flow. Reduced runoff velocity reduces erosion and gullying in the channel and allows sediments to settle out. A check dam may be built from stone, sandbanks, filled with clay, gravel, or logs. The next is construction of farm pines. The next one, second to the last, construction of diversion. And the last one is gully controlling, gully controlling structure. A structure installed across, active, across an active gully to stabilize the gully to control of erosion of gully bottom and banks is called gully control structure. The gully control structure is primarily designed for safe disposal of excess runoff generated from the watershed. Now, why is watershed management important? Why is it important for engineers, students, and aspiring engineers to know how and why and what 
and what to know about watershed management. It is because runoff from rainwaters no man can contribute significant amounts of pollution into the lake or river. Watershed management helps to control pollution of the water and other natural resources in the watershed by identifying the different kinds of pollution present in the watershed and how those pollutants are transported and recommending ways to reduce or eliminate those pollution sources. Watershed management is also important because the planning process results in a partnership among all affected parties in watershed. That's why, that is why water, watershed management is important to study. That's all. Thank you.